Headed on in to Tractor Supply. Going to check out, see what kind of reds they have. There's a red in particular I'm looking for, Safety Red. They got a couple there. You must grab this Catalyst Hardener. This is a must. I'm telling you guys, if you're going to use the Rust-Oleum, the Magic, or anything like that, throw that stuff in there. It's worth the money. But uh, got a couple Ford Reds here, Harvester Red or something like that. Wasn't quite what I was looking for, so I head on down. Head on over to uh, Lowe's there. And I am not sure what this guy was doing right here, but uh, he pulled out there anyway. And to cruise on into Lowe's and see what they got on the shelves. And right there it is, Safety Red. I painted a truck that color and it was gorgeous. I love the way it looked. $63.98. That's what I'm talking about. Acetone, grab a gallon of that cheap stuff right there. The KS Acetone, 61 bucks. Used it quite a few times. Now we went ahead and masked that bottom line. A lot of people ask me why I do that. And it's honestly just to keep the that black away from that red so it doesn't bleed through when you paint. And then me and Jordan got to work uh, masking and getting everything done. And uh, thanks to Jordan for helping me out. Really stepped in there. Tyler was uh, at a baseball tournament and could not help me. So Jordan jumped in there and we got it done. So the biggest problem I've had is this grill keeps cracking and breaking on me. So I put a piece of metal in there and literally screwed it. It already had rivets holding it together. I'm not sure who did that, but uh, so anyways, we just screwed it together for now. I'll get one down the road, I'm sure. But in order to keep going, I couldn't find one here locally that was under like $300. We are not paying that. So uh, just a 400 grit. We noticed that there was some previous body work right here. Um, that's not by me but it's not very straight either. And whoever did it, I don't think did the best job, but that's neither here nor there. Cause like I said, we're just, we're just sanding this thing, scuff and shoot. That's all we're going for. The hood looks terrible. Hopefully that comes out okay. I'm not sure to the touch, it feels smooth, but there's a lot of weird little imperfections and stuff in it. Uh, this came from Lowe's, this came from Lowe's. This is the only thing I bought from Tractor Supply is this hardener. I can't stress this enough, please. If you do this, use this hardener. It will make your life so much easier and it makes the product so much stronger, so much tougher, and it shines better and it does everything better, I promise. Um, this took me a long time to figure out. I was painting trucks with rust oleum for a year or two before I ever found out about this. And I remember I was Googling stuff five years ago, actually. Um, I was Googling stuff and I was getting on forums and I was like, what is the hardener that is in rust oleum or is there an accelerator that you can buy? And everybody said you can use magic tractor supply so that turned me on to the tractor supply stuff so that's how the story got started with me going to tractor supply and dumping this in rust-oleum and then i was like well that worked pretty good um worked really good actually i was shocked on how well this shined and kept and made it strong and made it last so i use this every single time now no matter what um it's like 20 bucks 20 something dollars uh, well worth the price if you ask me because it makes that paint legit seriously and it hardens up and you pour gas on it chemicals I haven't had any failure or any problems with it yet I haven't had it crack I haven't had anything honestly it makes the product really good this is what we got I'm gonna show you guys how I mix it um, I don't do like a four to one or you know two to one four to one anything like that um, so I don't I've used this particular red before on a really really pretty uh like an 80 i can't remember what year it was, it was like an 82 chevy step side um pickup truck that i did it's a uh, safety red and i didn't change the color of it or anything i left it safety red and it was bright but it was really really nice it shined really good um i built a motor right here in this garage it was one of the first projects i ever did in this garage um when we moved in and i was so happy to have you know a garage that I could actually work in. But anyways, uh, I've used this particular red before. I don't remember if it's thick or thin. So that's the only reason why I tell you like I only use about 30% thinner or 20% thinner. And I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. I do have some measuring cups and stuff. I have like the regular cup right here. And, and like I said, it says on the can that this is ready to spray. And I'm telling you, 
It is, you can do it that way, it will harden up. It takes like a week or two, seriously. But if you use this, this will dry in like a day or two and it makes it so much better. So I put, so it's one of these per gallon, um, just because it's already got hardener in it. You know, if you spray that paint with nothing right now and just add a little acetone to thin it down to get it through the gun, it will spray and it will paint and it will harden. It just takes a long time and it's just not as durable. I, I, I promise you it's not. So if you put this in there and it makes all the world a difference. I don't know how many of you guys open up cans of paint with a screwdriver, <laughs> but I do. This is a judge free zone. This is the truth, the truth tree right here. <laughs> truth tree. So here we go. Open it up for the first time. Show you exactly what we get. That is one bright, beautiful red. If you ask me, I love the color. I love this color. Um, when I painted my step side, I was really, really happy with it. It looked really, really good. So yeah, we're just gonna mix this up. This is just the professional grade one from Lowe's. I didn't buy the implement one. And honestly, guys, I never noticed a difference. This feels really thick. Look at that. That is some really, really thick paint. So we're gonna have to thin that down quite a bit. I've heard guys going even as much as 50%, you know, so if you have, you know, a cup, obviously, you know, halfway with paint and then the rest with thinner, top it off with that hardener. Um, I've never had to go quite that much. I usually do about 30 to 40% of thinner. And honestly, a lot of it's just by feel and, and uh, how it comes out of the gun. So what I did is I poured out like 250 milliliters, pretty much. So, so this is 236 milliliters. So I pulled that, poured out 250. I'm gonna pour this whole thing in here. Then it will be topped off, we'll mix it up, and we'll put it in there. And then all we gotta do is worry about how much thinner we put in there. So maybe we can make it a better calculation. <laughs> if, that's, if that's at all possible. Because I'm trying to do this without getting too complicated. So, so I'm gonna pour this whole thing in there. Honestly, it's easier if you just pop the whole top off. Okay, so she's hot. She's ready to roll. That's, that's all the contents of that little bottle. So now we're just gonna mix it up. I've never quite did it like this before, guys, so I'm sorry you have to bear with me a little bit. I'm not good at explaining my work, but a lot of people were really interested how to mix this. So, you know, if you do one of those per gallon, then you should be good to and go. And make sure you mix good. Every painter will tell you, make sure it's good and mixed. Get the sides, get the bottom, bring it up. Bottom up, just like you're making soup. <laughs> this video is just a lot of explaining and I'm sorry, I'm not good at explaining stuff. Um, not really much of a talker, except for when I'm on YouTube. <laughs> anyway, for, you know, if it takes up to seven seconds to start dripping, then that's about the consistency you want. A lot of old school guys will do it that way. And I've done it that way. And that's honestly probably pretty close to what we're going to use right now. And we'll just keep adding thinner till I think we're good. Any good painter will tell you that the best paint job is the wettest paint job that you can make without, without it running. The, like seriously, it's just as wet as you can get it on there. Um, too thin or too dry or too thin, it'll look dry. And when it's real wet and nice, um, it lays out, this stuff will kind of relax and lay out on its own after you spray it. So when you spray it, wait about, you know, five, 10 minutes and you can actually see it shine up a little bit and get smoother. So that's kind of cool too. So don't get in a real big hurry, you know, uh, right away. Just, just let it spray it on there. Make sure you got enough on there. Um, you want to get it as close to, you know, running without, without it running, if that makes any sense. Um, that's the best paint job that you can do is one that is just super wet and just on the verge of uh, running, not waterfalling or nothing. You still want it nice and tight, but you know, you don't want any ripples or anything in it. And that helps get rid of orange peel and all that stuff. If you can get it, uh, you know, really, really wet. I think to make this probably as easy as pie, we're going to go to 32 ounces. These pours are the hardest. All right, here we go. Okay, we want to go right to 32 ounces, just 
to make things easy. All right, try that, let's see, right there. Okay, so we're at 32 ounces, and remember, that's mixed up, it's got the hardener in it, that's ready to roll, so all we gotta do is mix in acetone, get it thin, and that's it. Then it's time to spray, it's time to rock and roll after that. And like I said, one of the only reasons I learned all this is because I wanted to paint my truck, and I wanted to find a simpler and cheaper solution. So it took a lot of Googling, a lot of asking painters, and a lot of stuff, you know, what is a cheap, good alternative that I can find and that I could buy that is gonna work and last and, you know, look good. And last, honestly. Okay, so I think we'll go to the 40 and we'll just kind of look at it as we go. Whoop. Came out a little faster than I thought. Okay. So we're right at the 40 so there. Give it a quick little spin. And that is already, that is nice and thin already. But I can already tell that it's not thin enough. That's actually probably thin enough to get through the gun. I think I want to add. I'm trying to wipe this clean every time so everybody can see what we're doing here. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we're just at the 40 there still. And I'm going to add just a little more. So I'm going to go to the 48 ounce. Okay, so we're at 32 with paint. So from 32 to 48, uh, 32 with paint to 48 ounces uh, with thinner. That's actually probably pretty thin right there. I think I'm gonna go with that. So that's about 16 ounces, I guess. All right. Oh boy, hope that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna look like a real dummy. Anyways, so yeah, about 16 ounces of thinner added. Like I said, the hardener's already in there. Catalyst hardener's already in there. So we eliminated that right off the bat. That way we don't have to break it down into math and all that stuff. That way it's easy. Then all we have to do is add the acetone. We've added 16 ounces of acetone. So this paint is not as thick as I thought it was. Because that, I think, is going to be perfect to spray with. It's going to be probably still might just be a hair on a thick side. Red's a hard color to paint. It's hard to see um, once you get it on there. So your second coat's kind of hard to see. The pigment in it plays tricks with your eyes. So that's always another fun one to try and work out. So maybe for the last coat, we we'll might add just a little more thinner. Not a whole lot, just a little bit thinner to make it flow out a little better. But other than that, I think we're there. So I think we'll go straight into the gun. I'm gonna hand this over to Jordan. Right, so we haven't done anything different. We're just gonna pour it right in the gun, right in the $14 Harbor Freight gun for our hundred and, I don't know, $10, $120 paint job, including the gun, I think. So, there we go. One thing I love to do first is get the problem areas. So anywhere where there's, you know, we kind of went through right there because there was a big bad scratch there. Anywhere, I'd like to hit those first. Just I just fog it. That way it gets a little extra there, a little extra protection, smooth everything out a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go ahead, normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit, the, uh, hit the hood first. Um, the bonnet for all you guys across the seas. I see you guys in my comments, I appreciate it. Um, so we hit the bonnet or the hood, hit the hood first, and then we'll hit our kind of walk around, hit our problem areas, just make sure everything's kind of blended in, melting together. And then I think we'll start at the top. And the goal is to keep everything wet. Oh, that's my luck. Right before we start, right before I got started, battery died, so. Oh, GoPro, do me a favor. You guys gotta make some better batteries, man. All right, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and hit some spots. So one thing about these Harbor Freight guns, is I notice if you have it wide open, like your fan, um, it'll tiger stripe more, but if you tighten it up, about like that, it works a lot better, at least for me. 
But that also means you have to go really fast. We're just gonna dust it. We're just dusting it on there right now. We're not worried about coverage. We're just kind of getting some on there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this hood real quick. So if you wanna step up there, Jordan. Pretty much what it's going to be. We got just some slight, slight imperfections in it, but we knew we were going to have that. Uh, it's not tiger striping too bad. It is just a little bit. Um, I forgot to tell you about my pressure, but I can do that later. So if I get that side, now I want to do this side. thing is I don't run an air pressure regulator on my gun that right there is an air dryer they're worth their weight I have a couple of them in case I need to use one if the, if the tank was to drip or anything I can use one but I have 70 pounds or no sorry I have 75 pounds coming out of my compressor right now it has a regulator on it with a valve and it's set at 75 pounds this is almost wide open here's where you control your air that's where you control your, your air pressure to the gun it is almost wide open. So I would say it's probably around 65 pounds, 60 pounds, somewhere right in there. With these Harbor Freight guns, I've always noticed that it says to run about 45 pounds of pressure. I can never get them to work right and atomize how I want at that pressure. So I always turn them up 60, 65 pounds. If I had a regulator on here, I'll, I'll almost promise you it'd be real close to that. It'd be a lot higher than 45, I'll guarantee you that. I'll bet you anything, it's probably around 60 pounds, 65 pounds. It, it is almost screwed all the way out if you can see that. So that's another thing. Also, when I paint, it's 50-50 coverage. And I'm talking about your fan. You know, if your fan's wide, so I do, I do one up and down. And when I come back, 50% of that, 50% of that, 50% of that every time. So it's just 50-50 coverage on the fan strokes when you're spraying. And that's, that's pretty much it. Anybody can do this. Um, if you, I hear, I get a lot of people in the comments saying, I want to paint my truck. You're motivating me to paint your truck. Try it. The only way you're going to do, the only way you're going to be able to do it is that you got to bite the bullet and just try it the first time and figure out what you can do from there. Um, but I think you guys can do it. Anybody can do it. It's just, you got to commit and do it and not be afraid to make a mistake. And you will make mistakes. I still make mistakes. I, I you know, it's going to happen. You know, this is just a backyard quick scuff and paint job that's nothing special um this isn't going to win any car shows or anything like that and also another thing don't be afraid like if it's taking you a while to get back to this this has very good pot life you can leave it open i leave it open the whole time it will not dry out on you it'll be fine 
Um, so yeah, you don't have to wor be worried about the pot life. Um, even if it's mixed with that catalyst hardener, it won't just get hard, you know, in an hour or two. It'll take a while. Once it's sprayed and atomized and thin, that's when it starts to really harden up quickly and stuff like that. So we've already kind of gone around, just hit a few thin spots here and there. Now we're gonna tackle the roof. first coat first coat number one and it's been about what 15 20 minutes it's been about 15 20 minutes and it looked kind of rough when you first paint it it always does and like I said it will relax if you get enough paint on there it will relax and it will smooth out a bit on its own this is just a backyard quick you know whatever's there there's some chips in the paint still or whatever and we just painted right over it um, just is what it is guys like we're not going for perfection here you know I'm just looking for a quick flipper or something like that um, but it's gonna last it's gonna be on there it's sanded good so it's gonna last a long time so yeah if you look at it now compared to when we just painted it like it's relaxed it's shining up it's really starting to come into to its own this is just the first coat um, it should get better with the second coat uh, the paint that was originally on this that we're covering up was not in good shape. It was cracking and it's got some crow's feet in it. You can still kind of see it and I knew you were going to. I knew this hood was going to be a wreck. Like there's, without priming and sanding and priming and sanding this hood, you're never going to get that out of there. There's a little dust in here. It's not super clean in here. Like when we did painted Rory's truck in here, we had it like really clean in here. Like we, we like swept the roof and everything, but you know, it's not that I don't care about this rig, of course I do, but just quick backyard. I would have did this outside, honestly. And I've done this outside for a long time. Jordan knows that. He knows we painted trucks outside. Um, use what you have. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed with this garage, so I'm gonna use it, but you don't have to have a garage to have a paint job like this. I think once we get a little more mill thickness on here, it'll smooth out some of those little minor bumps and stuff. Just a little more, not a whole lot. That's another reason why I like this rest because it's really thick. Even when you thin it down, it's still pretty thick. It's a thicker paint, like an automotive paint that you go buy from an automotive shop, like a paint shop, is thin. It's already thin and then you thin it more and reduce it down more and it sprays really thin. Um, this, even you can only get it so thin and then it doesn't want to spray correct. So you want to get it to where it's spraying good out of the gun and then just leave it at that because if you get it too thin then it gets real splotchy it's real hard it's kind of like and then it just wants to run because it's kind of a heavy paint so yeah just kind of show them down the side and stuff you can still kind of see through it there just a little bit and it's pretty aired out in here now i got the fans going but i got windows open the door open for a little while um but yeah this is going to be cool like, if we would have just primered over this, blocked it, and then just blocked it one time, and then sprayed paint over it, sprayed the paint over that, you would have got a way better result. Just doing that one time. Especially if you use like a thick four to one high build primer like we use, it works really, really good. But this right here is perfect for what we're doing. It's gonna look good, it's gonna shine. And when you walk outside in the parking lot, you're gonna go, there it is right there. You're gonna see it but from a mile away. There's code number one. Now we're going to start coat number two, and once it airs out in here again, we'll go ahead and uh, show you what it looks like. We're going to start number two right now. I'm not going to change a whole lot. I added just a little bit of thinner 
Honestly, it wasn't much, but I feel like the last coat just kind of lets it settle down a little bit better and you can kind of move a little quicker.
Dang! This son gun is red. Yeah, it's a lot better. We thought about doing it, Yeah, but I was like, nah. When the black's done. Can you peel it? Huh? Peel it. You can, but it's probably pretty sticky right now. Mm. I think that'll work. The new one can be no show car, but I think it's something good. I think it looks pretty dang good. Yeah. What do you think, man? Looks good. A lot better than... Like it? A lot better than what it looked. It's all black underneath. Oh, I'm scared. Ew. Oh, yeah. That'll look good. Want me to do it? If you want. I'm going to get dusty, too. Let's do this one. That's it. Well, it's all put together. Just gotta roll it outside now. You guys think? A lot more better? That actually doesn't look too bad. I, I didn't think it was gonna look that good. That's cool. Well, there she is outside anyway. Whoa. The 50 looking pretty good outside actually. I haven't really seen it outside too much. Like we said before, it's not perfect. It's still got some dings and dents and stuff in it, but it's perfect for what we wanted, I think. I think it looks pretty dang good. <laughs> yeah, the black really helped it out a lot. I actually don't hate the wheels on it either. No, they'll look better. But it'll look better with the black ones, yeah, for sure. The bumper looks pretty cool for what it is. I mean, we didn't change anything. We just angle cut it a little bit. This one's not angle cut quite as much, but I mean, does that really matter? I mean, I don't know. It'll probably bother me, I'll tell you that. It'll bother me, I know I'll, I'll have to fix it. <laughs> but I mean, there you go. About $120, $130, including the paint gun. Worth of paint. With your help from Jordan sanding and everything. So thanks Jordan, appreciate it. Cause Tyler was at baseball tournaments and stuff. Yeah, the we wheel wells don't look too bad. 50's looking pretty good. I gotta redo that door right there. Gotta finish welding that. I cut it apart because I didn't quite like the angle. It looked like it was gonna bind me. So, yeah. Cannot wait to get back to work on that car. But yeah, look at the 50 looking good. 50 is looking good. And remember, once the motor's in it, it goes down a little bit. Yeah, old 50's not looking too bad. And the Jeep XJ is really not looking bad. It's looking pretty good. What are you doing, buddy? Cleaning. Get her detailed up? Yeah. And take it to the car wash. Take it to the car wash. And he can take it to the car wash by himself now. Indeed. Somebody passed their driving test today. Indeed I did. <laughs> it's all right here. 
Right here. We, right got, we got it done just in time. Finished it yesterday and he went and took his driving test today and he passed. So good job on time. Pretty happy. We're pretty proud. Knew he could do it. I think it's awesome. Way awesome. Way awesome. Trying to get some video of it in the light today. Sun shining just a little bit. Still a little cloudy, but trying to get some light pictures of it. We haven't washed it or anything yet. Need to wash it and see if we can get some of the little dust particles that come out of the paint. Usually they do. Do like a brush and wipe it down. But uh, yeah, I mean that's it right now. We still got we still got wheels and tires. Um, we still got the three inch lift kit, and he's gonna get the windows tinted probably all within the next week or two. So indeed, indeed. And tomorrow, first day of school in his in his in his own truck. So that's cool. <laughs> I'm getting old. He's making me old. I don't like it.